This program is made possible in part by Biotronic, providing cardiac pacemakers and defibrillators. Because at Biotronic, we believe there is nothing more important than excellence for life. I'm Dr. Larry Santora and welcome to Health Matters. On today's show, we'll explore the hype surrounding antioxidants and whether or not drinks containing antioxidants are really worth it. We're also going to discuss anxiety with Chapman Psychology Professor Dr. Georg Efert and find out what causes it and what to do about it. But right now, we're going to dig into kids and nutrition. I'm very pleased to have Lorenz Dodge, who's a fourth grader here in Orange County, and Erin McDonald, a nutrition and fitness coach with the organization called Complete Wellness Now and Alicia Viejo. Welcome, Lorenz and Erin. Thank you. So, Lorenz, eating is fun, right? Yes. And what is your favorite food? Um, well, I like many different foods from the different food groups, but I have to say my favorite is strawberry. Strawberry. That's one of mine. Not number one, though. And what's number two? <laughs> number two is probably bean and cheese burritos. Bean and cheese burritos. Number one is pizza for me, and maybe a cherry is my second. Well, we have Erin here. She's a brilliant nutritionist, and she is going to teach you and I a lot, but mainly she's going to work with you, and I'm going to listen, and I'm going to learn something really important today, how to eat healthy. Well, what we're going to do today, Lorenz, is we're going to try to construct some breakfasts and, some, and a lunch on a healthier way of eating, and I think the most important thing I can teach you right at the beginning is if you can remember to eat the colors of the rainbow, and we can have all kids eat like that, then we're going to have kids eating a lot better. So we've got a whole bunch of fruits and different vegetables here. So we've got to start with a breakfast where I have a, a blueberry waffle, and it's actually a whole grain blueberry waffle, so that's a really good source of carbohydrate, gives you lots of energy for school. And we've got a nice yogurt here, which is a good protein source, and it gives you lots of calcium to make those nice strong bones. Now, if you could pick at every meal at least two different colors from the rainbow, that would make a perfect meal. So why don't you go ahead and pick any two colors you want and put it with breakfast and as much as you want. Um, for breakfast, I'll do some strawberries. That sounds wonderful. Oh, that's and your number one. Yeah. <laughs> and also maybe some blueberries on top of the blueberry waffle. What a great choice. So you look at something like that, and that is a very nutritious, complete meal. And it's delicious, because look how sweet it is. All that fruit, it's going to be so sweet. And you've got the blueberry waffle, which will give you lots of energy. And again, the yogurt, which makes it a really complete yes. meal. So I think a breakfast like that would give you lots of energy for school, where you're going to concentrate, and you're going to be able to learn a lot in class. Or if it was a weekend and you were hanging out with your friends, you can go out and play and dance and have a lot of fun and have lots of energy to do so, and then you won't be so hungry. Now, if we were talking about lunch, whether it's maybe a school lunch that you want to take in your lunch box or your lunch bag, or even, you know, on a non-school day and you wanted to have lunch at home, you know, I made here a sandwich and I made it on whole grain bread and I cut it into a heart shape because I always think that kids who um, have sandwiches cut into fun shapes like stars or flowers or hearts think it's much more fun to eat yeah. than just a plain sandwich. So we've got um, a sandwich on whole grain bread, and we put a piece of string cheese on it um, as well for a good piece of protein. Now it's up to you to decide. At least two colors, three would be great, um, of any kind of fruits and veggies that you want to add to it okay. to make it a more complete meal. Well, I, we have this delicious seed bar that I'd like to add, and some tomatoes. Now those little tomatoes are really sweet. And Maybe just some soybeans. The soybeans, aren't they fun to eat? You yeah. pop them in your mouth? That's a lot of fun. Now, if you look at a lunch like this where you've got two different colors, so that's going to give you lots of vitamins and lots of minerals, and you've got the really healthy sandwich and the healthy string cheese, and then, of course, for a fun dessert or a fun extra sweet treat in a school lunchbox, instead of cookies or candy, which you're finding a lot of kids, I'm sure a lot of your friends might take that for school, you could have something like a Z-Bar, which is high energy, lots of fiber. It's totally sweet, but it doesn't have any of the junk in there. So then you've got a much more complete meal. 
Now we've got a couple of other things here as you see. We've got different kinds of bars which are fun. So you've got something like this uh, pumpkin pie bar and you've got packages of raisins. Have you ever had these fruit leathers? Yes. Aren't those fun? Yes. You know, there are some fruit leathers out there that are not so good for you. But yes. then you've got fruit leathers like these which is just made from only dried fruit which are really healthy. And the nice things about these is they come in their own little package so you don't have to worry about um, putting it in a separate bag and it's portion controlled so once you're done with it you're done with it you don't go back for any more. Larry did you learn anything? I did. Do you think kids should read labels? I think kids should be avid label readers. I mean I think they need to see how much sugar is in something, um, how much fiber and how much fat is in that item because I think those are most important ingredients that kids today need to watch out for because they're eating diets that are too high in fat, too high in sugar and not enough fiber and if we can flip flop that where they're choosing foods that are higher in fiber, lower in fat, lower in sugar, you're going to see a much healthier child. What would you recommend like for most of their meals as a drink? What would you, what, what's your favorite drink? Maybe, um, most common you would have a bottle of water or something and you can have some cranberry juice or apple juice or just milk. Or just milk. Do you think, um, as far as milk goes, you think kids uh, need milk or, or can they get their calcium in other ways? And one of the best ways, of course, to get calcium, one of the most direct routes is through dairy products, whether mm -hmm. it's milk or yogurt. Um, they're both excellent sources of calcium. I think um, non-fat milk is the way to go versus regular milk or even 2% milk, which is still too high in saturated mm -hmm. fat, which is the artery clogging kind of fat. Um, but there are kids out there who don't like milk and who don't like dairy products and there are other food sources of calcium and even if your child doesn't like those food sources, there are calcium supplements. But getting calcium is probably yeah. one of the most important minerals for kids today to make strong bones. Do you like, ever have soy milk? Sometimes. I like soy milk. I like <laughs> it better than regular milk myself. Is soy milk good for kids, you think? Soy milk is yeah. great for kids. You know, there are plenty of kids out there who have an allergy or an intolerance to lactose, which is the sugar that is found in milk. Um, but the key thing then is if you're going to use soy milk or any other alternative milk is to buy a calcium fortified soy milk. Soy milk, okay. If I had to choose of all these things, um, I would think that hummus may be one of the most nutritional things or how does that fit ounce for ounce? You know, hummus here is a really nutritious food. It's high protein. Mm -hmm. It has a good source of the healthier kinds of fats, the more cardioprotective, mm -hmm. the heart protective um, fats, the monounsaturated fats. So it's a good protein, um, a good source of heart healthy fats, and it's a great dip. You know, sometimes you don't want to eat your vegetables plain, but if you have a nice dip to go with it that you know is good right, for right. you, you know, chances are you're going to get kids, as well as adults who need to eat better, more likely to eat their veggies if you provide mm -hmm. a good dip to go along. Do you think that you can teach your parents how to eat healthy like this? Definitely. Definitely. And if you did, would you start on the way home? Um, probably when I get home. Probably when I you get home. That's a good idea. Uh, this is for Erin. Do you think that uh, common, combining certain foods cuts down your, um, your, your metabolism or increases your metabolism? Some people have advocated combining certain types of food increases your metabolism as a weight loss method or is it simply calories in and calories out? The bottom line with weight is calories in, calories out. Right. You need to create a calorie deficit where you're burning more calories than you're taking in if your goal is to lose weight. Um, I do feel that each time you have a meal or a snack, and it's important to eat quite often to keep your metabolism mm -hmm. high, that's the key thing, but to have the right kinds of nutrients. You want to have a lot of fiber, you want to have a good lean protein source and you want to keep the fat level low. And if you have lots of fruits and vegetables at each meal where you're looking at your produce as the main part of your plate and the protein and the grain as your side dishes, you're going to be um, much fuller for a longer period of time. You're going to get better nutrition mm -hmm. and you're going to have an easier time with weight management. This looks like a foolproof method. All we have to do is do, I've learned a lot today and I you're a great guest, Lorenz. Thank you. And Erin, thank you so much. I learned a lot. You're and I guess the message is, what do you think the message is? To eat healthier and have a more variety of fruits and vegetables. And the color of the rainbow. Lorenz, Erin, thank you so much for coming today. We'll be right back.
later in the show, what you should know right now about anxiety. Fact or fiction? If you cut or scrape yourself, you should lick the wound. Fiction, this is really a bad idea. It's much better to put an antiseptic on it or wash it with soap and water, but don't lick it. Your mouth is full of all types of bacteria. Welcome back. Each week we look forward to receiving questions about health and wellness from viewers like you. And it's time to tackle today's question. Yo, Dr. Centura, can you share from Long Beach? Here's today's question. There are a lot of drinks available today with antioxidants. What does that mean and are they worthwhile? Great question, Kainushi. You know, we're being bombarded every day about advertisements for fruit juices that have high antioxidant content. Antioxidants are a substance that are produced in fruits and vegetables that counteract the bad effects of normal cell metabolism. Every cell in our body releases a chemical called a free radical. That free radical can damage the cell unless it's removed from the cell or counteracted by these antioxidants. Now most of us get our antioxidants in, in the fruits and vegetables that we eat. And you can also get them in vitamins like vitamin A and vitamin C. The idea that certain berries have more antioxidants than others has been around forever and they've been tested quite well. And pomegranate tends to have the highest amount of antioxidants. Then second down the line would be red wine. The third would be Concord grapes. Uh, then you would get berries like blackberry and raspberry. Then you would get more exotic fruits like acai, uh, noni juice, and orange juice and grapefruit juice have a high antioxidant content. So the real question that you have to ask yourself, do you really want to spend the extra money for the potential antioxidant potential of these different beverages? They can be quite expensive. For instance, noni juice is at least a dollar an ounce, sometimes more. Acai is about 60 cents an ounce, but certain types of uh, proprietary acai beverages have, they're a dollar 50 an ounce. So you're gonna dr drink four or five bucks worth of acai juice a day. I'm not sure that's worth it, Pomegranate is about 36 cents an ounce, and good old orange juice is about six or seven cents an ounce. There is no scientific study showing that any of these would make you live longer, live better, or be happier uh, than if you just one over the other. And there's nothing that says that even though this has the highest, pomegranate has the highest antioxidant content, that really, when you ingest it, really changes to anything more beneficial than, say, orange juice. So my advice to you is look at how much they cost. If you can afford it and you, f you like the taste and, they, f and it, you, they make you feel better, then go for it. But I think for the money, any of the inexpensive berry juices or, or orange juice or grapefruit juice is the way to go. But, um, you know, it's really up to you. But there's no evidence that drinking these is any better than taking it in, in our normal uh, healthy meals. Be sure to send us your questions. Our email address is healthmatters at chapman.edu. We'll be right back. Fact or fiction? Red meat raises cholesterol. Fiction. Studies have shown that people who eat lean red meat had no significant rise in their cholesterol when compared to those whose diet consisted of a lean white meat. More than 19 million adults in the United States struggle with some form of anxiety disorder. It's the nation's most common mental health problem. We're now joined by Dr. Georg Eifert, a psychology professor at Chapman University and author of numerous books, including his most recent, The Mindfulness and Acceptance Workbook for Anxiety. Welcome, Georg. Thank you for inviting me, Larry. Thanks so much. This is a big topic because it's so common and so prevalent these days. Is most anxiety part situational or is it some other metabolic problem going on? No, most anxiety problems really are situational and there's not even a lot of genetic influence involved. There is some genetic influence, mm -hmm. but really most people just acquire these problems over the course of their lifetime, mm -hmm. sometimes even when they're very young, and, um, and then it doesn't go away. Anxiety is one of the things that actually, if you don't do anything about it, it usually doesn't go away on its own. And this is, is it often, a, I often hear anxiety, depressive disorders, is, is depression a big part of it or no? Is it? Uh... Yeah, about, in fact, about half of, 50% uh, of people who have an anxiety disorder are also depressed. 
But the thing is that most people start out with the anxiety disorder, not with the depression. Okay. And they develop depression over time because of what they allow anxiety to do with their life. Because what happens is they spend so much time managing and struggling with their anxiety and they're doing less. They're not going out. Sometimes they don't even go to work and you know they do a lot of uh, things they no, no longer do a lot of things that they used to do and that gave them pleasure and that were meaningful to them and then over time they do get depressed and it's not an abnormal thing to get depressed over that yeah. it's actually quite understandable because you lose control of your life in, in a sense because you're not enjoying your life like you yes. used to and yes and it's so so you don't really treat the depression you treat the anxiety yes. and that takes care of the depression I imagine. that's correct yes now when do you know that you should seek some kind of I mean when is it we're all anxious. We, we, yes. I mean, just coming here today, you become anxious. But when is anxiety a right. problem for you? Well, most people think that anxiety becomes a problem when they have just a lot of anxiety. But that's actually not the case. There are people out there who do have a lot of anxiety and who do not have an anxiety disorder. If you want to know whether or not you have a problem, you just really basically have to look at your life and ask yourself, is anxiety holding me back from what I want to do? Is it interfering with my life? Don't look at the intensity. I mean, I'm very anxious right now. I'm, I'm, in fact, I was very anxious before I came here. Yeah, okay. uh, you know, <laughs> I, almost like a panic attack. But that, that doesn't mean I have panic disorder. I you know, see. It, it, if I didn't come to this show, because I say, oh, well, I, I have too much anxiety and I don't want to have it, and therefore I will not go to the show, well, then I'm on the way to developing a disorder. It's when you allow anxiety to interfere with your life and what is important to you, then it becomes a disorder. So you're controlling the anxiety in a sense, it's not controlling you. You're living your life, you feel it like we all do, but Yeah, so. well, and here's the thing, you used a very important word. I'm actually not controlling my anxiety because that's, that is the pitfall. So many people look for treatments that that are aimed at controlling, managing, reducing, preferably even eliminating anxiety. And the bad news is that doesn't work. It really doesn't work very well. Um, and the good news is you don't have to get rid of all your anxiety. You don't even have to get rid of it. Uh, you know, the most uh, panicky part of it. You can take your anxiety along and do what matters to you with your anxiety. That may mean, yes, sometimes you have to take it along for the ride, as we say. But if you do that, over time you will actually see that your anxiety changes too. But the most important thing is to give up control, controlling your anxiety and struggling with it. Oh, I see. So you're actually kind of letting go in a way. And I think that's probably part of your, I, I think you go into that yes. in your book. Yes. The book is, I, I understand, is very well, well written and right. very helped a lot of people. And it's a self-help book, is yes, that right? Yes, it is a self-help book. And that's the good news that people really can do something about it themselves. You don't have to rely on medication. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people do. And the fact is, and the studies show that, that medication only goes so far. And when, often when you stop taking the medication, your anxiety is back to where it was. But you used a very crucial word just now. You said the answer or something, the solution is to let go. And that's really true. And, you know, I brought this, uh, this, this, this rope along, and that's really, it's like a tug of war. And people are, find themselves in a tug of war with their anxiety. Anxiety is pulling them, and then they try to pull back. And somehow they try to win it and, you know, and, and, and well, eliminate it and, 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 and win this war. And so it goes on and on. But when you ask people, have you ever won this war? They will tell you, no, hmm. no. Okay. I've tried so many things and everything, nothing. And, it, and the... the the answer is not to win this tug of war because it's unwinnable. The answer is letting go, dropping the rope. And what we really show people in the book is how to drop the rope, how to end the tug of war with your anxiety so that you can live the life that you want to live. So somebody feels they're stressed out and they're not overly consumed with this anxiety, they can buy your book 
and they can find they can go through it's a self-help book yes right? so they can find their way through this yes what are the I, there's the three core steps what is that about yeah well the first step is really t understanding that yeah. the all these solutions that people have tried before to get rid of their anxiety that they really haven't worked and that they may never work and the good news is they need not work they can do something different they can actually start letting go mm -hmm. of the rope, getting out of this struggle, of, out yeah. of this fight. And then the second uh, step is to learn the skill about how to do this. How do I actually do this? How can I not let anxiety rule my life? And one thing that you can learn to do is to become more mindful of your experience. Because ultimately, what is anxiety? Anxiety are a, a lot of physical sensations that, that can be very, very aversive, you know, very, uh, very difficult. Um, a lot of negative thoughts, uh, panicky thoughts, we sometimes call them catastrophizing mm -hmm. thoughts, um, worries, excessive worries. And now you have all these things. Now mm -hmm. what can you do with them? Well, you can learn to look at them, you know, like from an observer perspective. And that's really what mindfulness is. Not run away from them, not try to get rid of them, not try to change them. Just look at them and rec recognize them for what they are. Thoughts, physical sensations, things that your mind throws at you, but that you don't need necessar necessarily to listen to. And you certainly don't need to do what your mind seemed to be telling you, which is to run away, get out of the situation, or don't go there because it's too dangerous. Your mind is telling you all these things. And what we are sometimes say to people, your mind is not always your best friend. <laughs> I see. So you're saying the you can actually you don't have to get away from these, but you can you can deal with them differently. Is that, is yes. that what you're saying? Yes. You can you can really respond to them differently. differently. And that's what you can control. Yeah. You know, it it I it would be so great if we had a switch, you know, somewhere or, or some kind of smart technique by which we can actually turn well, off the panic that button. Be great. And the thing is, no, nobody has invented that. And I, I hope the viewers will understand and recognize that people who promise that promise them too much. It just, it is a normal thing to have. Now, what, but what we can do is to recognize the anxiety for what it is and start to do, uh, and start to relate to it in a different way, not do what it says, mm -hmm. not respond to it by running away from it, but just observe it, just have it which you have it anyway. Okay. I see uh, you have some well, these tools here to help us a little bit. In some ways, yeah. And in fact, I can, I can show you what we, what we do with this. And um, you know, in some ways, many people treat anxiety like this, like this Chinese finger trap. It's you not know? the end of my career. Yeah, you go, it, you, know? <laughs> you go in like this, okay. And then obviously your mind is telling you, well, if you came in, if you got in here by pushing in, well, you've got to pull out oops, pull out uh, if you want to get out. But do you notice what happens when yeah, you pull? Trapped, yeah. yeah, you get trapped. And, and that's exactly what happens in people's lives. That's this is their life situation. They try to run away from the anxiety. They try to control it. They try to get rid of it. And as they do, it, their life gets tighter and tighter and tighter, and they're stuck. That's a great example. And so what do you do? You do the thing that is kind of counterintuitive. Well, Boom. you have to push in again, you That's know. That's a great example. That's and right. then you see, at, you may not get out right away, but you have some wiggle room. You know, you yeah. have some more space, and that's exactly what happens with your life. That's a great example. Well, we're almost out of time. I guess the, the final message here would be about anxiety. What would, you, what would you say? Stop trying to control it, to manage it, to eliminate it. Don't run away from it. Mm learn to be with it, learn the skills to be with it, and focus on what you can change, what you do with your hands and feet, and what you want your life to stand for. That's great. I'm sure this book is going to come in very handy in these economic times, the Mindfulness and Acceptance Workbook for Anxiety. Thank you, yes. Georg, for coming. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Please email your comments and questions to healthmatters at chapman.edu. I'm Dr. Larry Santora, and remember, your health matters. Mindfulness and a 
approaching anxiety in a different way than you have in the past is, is really something very important. And it's a skill that you can learn. And one way to do that is to actually practice being mindful at times when you're not in kind of a high anxiety situation. This program is made possible in part by Biotronic, providing cardiac pacemakers and defibrillators. Because at Biotronic, we believe there is nothing more important than excellence for life. I'm Dr. Larry Santora and welcome to Health Matters. On today's show, we'll explore the hype surrounding antioxidants and whether or not drinks containing antioxidants are really worth it. We're also going to discuss anxiety with Chapman Psychology Professor Dr. Georg Efert and find out what causes it and what to do about it. But right now, we're going to dig into kids and nutrition. I'm very pleased to have Lorenz Dodge, who's a fourth grader here in Orange County, and Erin McDonald, a nutrition and fitness coach with the organization called Complete Wellness Now and Alicia Viejo. Welcome, Lorenz and Erin. Thank you. So, Lorenz, eating is fun, right? Yes. And what is your favorite food? Um, well, I like many different foods from the different food groups, but I have to say my favorite is strawberry. Strawberry. That's one of mine. Not number one, though. And what's number two? <laughs> number two is probably bean and cheese burritos. Bean and cheese burritos. Number one is pizza for me, and maybe a cherry is my second. Well, we have Erin here. She's a brilliant nutritionist, and she is going to teach you and I a lot, but mainly she's going to work with you, and I'm going to listen, and I'm going to learn something really important today, how to eat healthy. Well, what we're going to do today, Lorenz, is we're going to try to construct some breakfasts and, some, and a lunch on a healthier way of eating, and I think the most important thing I can teach you right at the beginning is if you can remember to eat the colors of the rainbow, and we can have all kids eat like that, then we're gonna have kids eating a lot better. So we've got a whole bunch of fruits and different vegetables here. So we've gotta start with a breakfast where I have a, a blueberry waffle, and it's actually a whole grain blueberry waffle, so that's a really good source of carbohydrate, gives you lots of energy for school. And we've got a nice yogurt here, which is a good protein source, and it gives you lots of calcium to make those nice strong bones. Now if you could pick at every meal at least two different colors from the rainbow, that would make a perfect meal. So why don't you go ahead and pick any two colors you want and put it with breakfast and as much as you want. Um, for breakfast, I'll do some strawberries. That sounds wonderful. Oh, that's and your number one. Yeah. <laughs> and also maybe some blueberries on top of the blueberry waffle. What a great choice. So you look at something like that, and that is a very nutritious, complete meal. And it's delicious, because look how sweet it is. All that fruit, it's gonna be so sweet. And you've got the blueberry waffle, which will give you lots of energy, and again, the yogurt, which makes it a really complete meal. So I think a breakfast like that would give you lots of energy for school, where you're gonna concentrate, and you're gonna be able to learn a lot in class. Or if it was a weekend, and you were hanging out with your friends, you can go out and play and dance, and have a lot of fun and have lots of energy to do so, and then you won't be so hungry. Now, if we were talking about lunch, whether it's maybe a school lunch that you want to take in your lunch box or your lunch bag, or even you know on a non-school day and you wanted to have lunch at home, you know I made here a sandwich and I made it on whole grain bread and I cut it into a heart shape because I always think that kids who um, have sandwiches cut into fun shapes like stars or flowers or hearts think it's much more fun to eat yeah. than just a plain sandwich. So we've got. Um, a sandwich on whole grain bread, and we put a piece of string cheese on it um, as well for a good piece of protein. Now it's up to you to decide. At least two colors, three would be great, um, of any kind of fruits and veggies that you want to add to it okay. to make it a more complete meal. Well, I, we have this delicious seed bar that I'd like to add. 
and some tomatoes. Now those little tomatoes are really sweet. And maybe just some soybeans. The soybeans, aren't they fun to eat? You yeah. pop them in your mouth? That's a lot of fun. Now if you look at a lunch like this where you've got two different colors, so that's gonna give you lots of vitamins and lots of minerals, and you got the really healthy sandwich and the healthy string cheese, and then of course for a fun dessert or a fun extra sweet treat in a school lunchbox, instead of cookies or candy, which you're finding a lot of kids, I'm sure a lot of your friends might take that for school, you could have something like a Z-Bar, which is high energy, lots of fiber, it's totally sweet, but it doesn't have any of the junk in there. So then you've got a much more complete meal. Now we've got a couple of other things here, as you see, we've got different kinds of bars, which are fun. So you've got something like this uh, pumpkin pie bar, and you've got packages of raisins. Have you ever had these fruit leathers? Yes. Aren't those fun? Yeah. You know, there are some fruit leathers out there that are not so good for you. But then you've got fruit leathers like these, which is just made from only dried fruit, which are really healthy. And the nice things about these is they come in their own little package, so you don't have to worry about um, putting it in a separate bag. And it's portion controlled, so once you're done with it, you're done with it. You don't go back for any more. Larry, did you learn anything? I did. Do you think kids should read labels? I think kids should be avid label readers. I mm -hmm. mean, I think they need to see how much sugar is in something, um, how much fiber and how much fat is in that item. Because I think those are most important ingredients that kids today need to watch out for mm -hmm. because they're eating diets that are too high in fat, too high in sugar, and not enough fiber. And if we can flip-flop that, where they're choosing foods that are higher in fiber, lower in fat, lower in sugar, you're going to see a much healthier child. What would you recommend, like, for most of their meals as a drink? What would you, what, what's your favorite drink? Maybe, um, most common, you would have a bottle of water or something, and you can have some cranberry juice or apple juice or just milk. Or just milk. Do you think, um, as far as milk goes, you think kids need milk? Or can they get their calcium in other ways? And one of the best ways, of course, to get calcium, one of the most direct routes is through dairy products, whether it's milk or yogurt. Um, they're both excellent sources of calcium. I think um, non-fat milk is the way to go versus regular milk or even 2% milk, which is still too high in saturated mm -hmm. fat, which is the artery clogging kind of fat. Um, but there are kids out there who don't like milk and who don't like dairy products. And there are other food sources of calcium. And even if your child doesn't like those food sources, there are calcium supplements. But getting calcium is probably yeah. one of the most important minerals for kids today to make strong bones. Do you like, ever have soy milk? Sometimes. I like soy milk. I like <laughs> it better than regular milk myself. Is soy milk good for kids, you think? Soy milk is yeah. great for kids. You know, there are plenty of kids out there who have an allergy or an intolerance to lactose, which is the sugar that is found in milk. Um, but the key thing then is if you're going to use soy milk or any other alternative milk is to go buy a calcium fortified soy milk. Soy milk, okay. If I had to choose of all these things, um, I would think that hummus may be one of the most nutritional things or how does that